Um, so welcome everybody to this uh, workshop. It's already the last workshop from GYC Europe. So I just hope that you've enjoyed all the workshops that were on Friday and you've enjoyed also uh, yesterday, the beautiful Sabbath that we had. And also today with the um, morning devotion. Today, um, I'm very happy to present uh, Natalia. Um, She's going to be talking about activity cultivate this power, the impact of exercise in our mental and spiritual health. And um, to know a little bit more about Natalia, uh, she's a certified personal trainer and she has a really high passion for healthy lifestyle. Uh, and um, even though she does not work as a personal trainer right now. She knows a lot of things about this topic and she's going to present them to us. So um, I'm just willing to, to hear about, uh, about it, Natalia. And, uh, but before we start, we just have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are really thankful for this uh, GYC conference. Uh, we are feel really blessed with all the messages that uh, they've been spoken, that they've uh, um, even Sebastian and, and Christopher have uh, given us. We want to pray that today, that is the last day, uh, we can take advantage of all the, the activities and all the last messages that are going to be said, that they can reach our hearts, that they can really... Um, Help us to change, to have a, to make a powerful decision uh, to uh, follow you. Now I want to pray for Natalia and his and her worship. I pray that uh, you, your words are going to be spoken by her, and that um, it's your message that uh, she's going to transmit to us. Well, we thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Natalia, all yours. Thank you, Christian. Hello, everyone, and good morning. Um, I'm very happy to be at GYC with you this year. And my first year at GYC was actually two years ago in Portugal. It was, yeah, an amazing experience. Um, yes. Oh, just change the slide. Yeah. If you don't mind, I will. I want to start with, with sharing a powerful quote with you. And it's from Steps to Christ. Strength comes by exercise. Activity is the very condition of life. Those who endeavor to maintain Christian life by passively accepting the blessings that come through the means of grace and doing nothing for Christ are simply trying to live by eating without working. And in the spiritual as in the natural world, this always uh, results in degeneration and decay. A man who would refuse to exercise his limbs would soon lose all power to use them. Thus, the Christian who will not exercise his God-given powers not only fails to grow up in, into Christ, but he loses the strength that he already had. And it's a powerful quote, but we will um, get back to it. Um, yes, we prayed, thank God. And... Yes. And the title, as Christian said, is Activity Cultivates Power, the Impact of Physical Exercise on Our Mental and Spiritual Health. And as Christian said, my name is Natalia uh, Shmi, and I'm 22 years old, and I'm originally from Poland, but I live now in Norway, and I have been living here for 14 years now. And um, I was raised in a Seventh-day Adventist home. And as you probably know uh, by the description and that I got baptized at 15 years old, but for many years I lived like a lukewarm Christian 
or lukewarm Adventist, where I professed with my lips that I loved God, but I really denied him with my lifestyle. But thank God I gave up my life to him two and a half years ago uh, and have been living and working for him since then. And yes, I'm a personal trainer. And if you don't know what it is, a personal trainer coach clients individually according to their fitness needs through an agreed exercise or physical activity plan and assist with behavioral change. But as Christian said, unfortunately, I don't work as a as it now because I study psychology full time beside my part time job with children and also working for God, of course. But anyway, um, I want to make a, one disclaimer I want to share before we start is that the content of this presentation is not to treat any mental diseases. It's only to inform you and to inspire you to make changes in your life based on your physical activity level. And it is also important to mention that physical exercise is not a cure for poor mental health, but it's only a recommended health coping mechanism for everyday life. Oh, sorry. There. And we all know that physical exercise is beneficial. We hear this all the time that you should exercise because it's good for you. But what does this mean exactly? Because many of us know that physical exercise is good for our physical health and it contributes to lower our risk of diabetes, cardiovascular diseases and cancer. But many of us don't know or have forgotten that physical exercise is good also for our mental and spiritual health. Um, but firstly, we need to look at what the difference is between mental and spiritual health. To summarize in one sentence what mental health is, the definition by World Health Organization is that it is a state of well-being in which the individual realizes his or her own abilities that cope um, can cope with normal stresses of life and can work productively and fruitfully. And to say this in a more biblical way, this is the product of a well-developed character, including the cognitive, emotional and behavioral aspects of us as human beings. And spiritual health. A scientific article that was based on a, a qualitative study to try to find a definition of spiritual health stated, participants defined spiritual health in three dimensions, religious, individualistic and material world oriented. The study revealed four types of connection in spiritual health, human connection with God, himself, others, and the nature. So this definition simply says that spiritual health is one's feeling of a higher purpose and connection with others, with nature or with a higher power. So the easiest way to understand these uh, mental health benefits of physical exercise um, is to understand how our brain works. Our brain is an organ, as you know, like our hearts, lungs and our muscles. And how does organs get the nutrients and the oxygen they need? Well, from the blood. And the brain have blood vessels going all throughout it, the same way as other organs in our bodies. And we know that exercise helps the blood vessels with their 
elasticity and helps them transport the nutrients and oxygen more effective. And it also helps the connection between the neurons stay strong. So if this is what happens to our brains while we exercise, then our brain is probably being empowered in a very powerful way. Sorry for that. Okay. And I bet that many of you here are students like me. And I bet that many of us don't seem to feel like we can fit physical exercise to our daily schedule, especially when midterm exams hit. <laughs> and it's so easy to overthink and balancing everything becomes very hard and stressful. And we feel that everything is peeling up and we feel overwhelmed and anxious and our mental health is suffering. All we can think about is all the things that we need to do and we may don't have the time to do it all. Okay, but we may not know or we may have forgotten that even taking 30 minutes of any form of physical exercise five times a week can be a great benefit for our mental health. And that's why, um, oh, I just lost my presentation. Um, you see it now, or? Yes, we yes, see okay. it now. Yeah, thank you. Okay, in a book called Health Psychology, uh, uh, I have a quote here, and it's regular exercise improves not only physical health, but also mood and emotional well-being. And it's nothing strange with that because when we exercise, our brains recognize this as a moment of stress. And it's pretty... Yeah, weird. And then our bodies releases chemicals called endorphins to fight the stress. And these endorphins interact with opioids uh, receptors in the brain. And the binding of these receptors can elevate mood by reducing pain per perception and therefore triggering a more positive feeling in the body. And therefore, we should really consider if we do enough physical exercise, exercise throughout the week and if we exercise enough overall. And physical exercise is also proven to greatly reduce day-to-day -day stress, increase self-reported happiness level and lower levels of sadness and loneliness. It can prevent also depression and anxiety, and in some cases can even be as effective as psychological and pharmaceutical treatments. A study found that running for just 15 minutes a day or walking for one hour can reduce the risk of major depression by 26%. And as I said earlier, um, physical exercise boots, boosts our uh, body's production of endorphins, which are hormones that help you relax, feel more pleasure, feel less pain, and reduce amount of stress hormones in our bodies called cortisol. And it also helps your brain to produce more dopamine and serotonin, which are chemicals responsible for making you feel happy. And an observational study looking at 1.2 million adults across the US found that on average, there is a 43.2% reduction in the number of poor mental health days experienced by, by those who exercise regularly compared to people who don't exercise. 
and exercising for 30 to 60 minutes a day was associated with the biggest reduction in poor mental health days. But this is interesting. But exercising for more than three hours a day was associated with worse mental health than not exercising at all. And therefore, it's obviously that obsessively exercising is not healthy. So it's very important to remember that. Okay. And why has God not told us about this before? <laughs> well, he has. And I have a quote here from Ellen White. In order for men and women to have well-balanced minds, all the powers of the being should be called into use and developed. They overstudy while they neglect that which pertains to the practical life. That the balance of the mind may be maintained. A judicious system of physical work should be combined with mental work. That there may be a harmonious development of all the powers. And I remember that she also says in the book Mind, Character and Personality that when we have nothing to occupy our time and attention to, our thoughts become centered upon ourselves. And many times we start to dwell upon our bad feelings and thoughts. And she then also reminds us of that in all cases, well-directed physical exercise would prove an effective remedy for recovery of mental health. Yeah. And health psychologists have also found beneficial effects, uh, effects of, of exercise on cognitive functioning, especially on executive functioning involved in planning and higher order reasoning. So, a physical exercise enhances thinking, learning, judgment skills, and also improves our executive functioning like planning and higher order reasoning, which means it improves our ability to figure out how and when to accomplish our goals and improves our ability to not only remember what we need for an exam, but to actually understand, analyze, evaluate, and discuss the things we have to understand, then isn't it more than reasonable to prioritize physical exercise in our personal lives to experience the cognitive power that we can get from it? And why has not God told us about this before? Well, he has. He says <laughs> through Ellen White, the time spent in physical exercise is not lost. And this is important. The student who is constantly poring over his books while he takes but little exercise in the open air does himself an injury. A proportionate uh, exercise of the various organs and faculties of the body is essential to the best work of each. When the brain is constantly taxed while the other organs are left inactive, there is a loss of physical and mental strength. The physical powers are robbed of their healthy tone the mind loses its freshness and vigor or power, you can say, I think. And she also says, physical labor will not prevent the cultivation of the intellect. Far from it. The advantages gained by physical labor will balance a person and prevent the mind from being overworked. Okay, okay and last one. Ministers, teachers, students, and other brain workers often suffer from illness 
as the results of severe mental taxation, unrevealed by physical exercise. What these persons need is some more active life, strictly temperate habits combined with proper exercise would ensure both mental and physical vigor and would give power of endurance to all brain workers. And don't we want to remember more? Don't we want to do everything that we can to don't get, for example, dementia or other cognitive impairments when aging? Well, I do. An exercise appears to promote memory and health cognitive aging and healthy cognitive aging. And that's another reason why we should incorporate physical exercise in our weekly schedule. And I have here uh, a pretty interesting um, uh, quote from uh, Jordan Peterson or I paraphrase from a video I saw of him. And he says, as soon as I'm getting older, I really notice the difference between peop people when they age, between people who lay down a good physiological platform when they were young and those who didn't. Because if you haven't worked out weights particularly, you start to get pretty soft in your 30s and your cardiovascular system starts to go. The best thing you can do to maintain cognitive ability is not cognitive exercises, but physical exercise. So if you are 50, you can restore your cognitive function for the level of a 30-year-old through both uh, cardiovascular exercise and weight uh, lifting. And the brain is very metabolically demanding. And when you are not in a good physical shape, and when you compromise the brain's function with a bad cardiovascular system, then you get stupid. <laughs> well, that was pretty straightforward, but I think it's very important. And physical exercise improves also our spiritual health. And a study was done on a church-based holistic intervention. The purpose of the study was to evaluate the effectiveness of a mind, body, and sp uh, spiritually-based health promotion program in increasing physical activity and promoting mental and spiritual health. And physical activity was higher in the intervention group than the comparison group. In contrast to the comparison group, both mental health and especially depression symptoms and spiritual health improved significantly more among intervention participants. And this finding was unexpected as the comparison group had a similar spiritual component in their program. That is quite interesting. Yes. And another study done in 1999 had a purpose to evaluate the strength of relationship between spiritual health and health promoting behaviors. And among other things, this study uh, resulted in a moderate positive linear relationship between spiritual health and exercise, which means that the participants who exercised had a better uh, spiritual health. And the more they exercised, the better their spiritual health became. And why has not God told us about this before? Well, he has. 
And this is from the book Education, page 195. Since the mind and the soul find expression through the body, both mental and spiritual vigor or power are in great degree dependent upon physical strength and activity. Whatever promotes physical health promotes the development of a strong mind and a well-balanced character. Without health, no one can as distinctly understand or as completely fulfill his obligations to himself, to his fellow beings, or to his create creator. And God through Ellen White also says that work is a blessing, not a curse. Diligent labor will keep us from many of the snares of Satan. Because work in itself will bless and strengthen the body, enriching and developing the character. The character. Therefore, I think working out in various ways can also be a blessing. It can actually protect us from evil in a way. And what I mean by that is besides getting the uh, benefits of wellness and happiness, working out get us disciplined, gives us clear thoughts and sharpens our decision making. And therefore it will be a protector from temptation and sin. And when we repeated, uh, repeatedly, we let, repeatedly, repeatedly, I'm so bad at English pronunciation, repetitively work out, even if we don't feel like it, it will become a habit that will be a powerful tool to stay away from evil. And for example, I have experienced this myself. When I use my time to do uh, physical labor or physical exercise that I like, that automatically gives me less time to do meaningless things or to get tempted in various ways. And it also gives me clear, clearer thoughts and a sober mind to be uh, more awake. And that helps me to always be on guard if my mind is focused on worldly uh, things or on heavenly uh, things. And that's why Ellen White also said, the proportionate uh, taxation of the powers of mind and body will prevent the tendency to impure thoughts and actions. And back to this quote we read uh, at the beginning. I will read it again because it's so amazing. Strength comes by exercise. Activity is the very condition of life. Those who endeavor to maintain Christian life by passively accepting the blessings that come through the means of grace and doing nothing for Christ are simply trying to live by eating without working. And in the spiritual as in the natural world, this always results in degeneration and decay. A man who would refuse to exercise his limbs would soon lose all powers to use them, all power to use them. Thus the Christian who will not exercise his God-given powers not only fails to grow up into Christ, but he loses the strength that he already had. And by this quote, I got really inspired to try to understand physical exercise in a different way. And what I mean by that is that it can give us, give us some precious lessons about our walk with Jesus. Because, um, when we exercise our muscles, especially uh, hypertrophy strength training, we tear down and damage the fibers of the muscle 
but while resting after a workout, the body repairs the muscle tissues, which increases the mass and the size of the muscle. And this process can be transferred to our spiritual life, I think. Because when we come to Jesus with a humble heart, with our sin that destroys us, literally, he is then able to tear us from our sin. He destroys our carnal and sinful tissues from our soul. And that, and that can be a very painful thing if the sin is something that we love, sadly, but sometimes true. But after the repentance of our sins, we can then rest in the promises of God that he washes us and makes us clean and righteous before him. And finally, Jesus increases the mass and the size of our spiritual muscles and our faith becomes stronger and more endurable. And this process can also be transferred to our life of service to, for God. When we are in service for God, we may often become physically and mentally teared down. But after that, when we take a time to rest in front of the cross and beside Jesus' feet, he can restore our strength and repair our spiritual muscles and increase the mass and the size of our relationship with him and increase the love for other people and for him, of course. And as Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Okay. Now, how does physical exercise cultivate power in our personal lives? Well, let me give you uh, an illustration inspired by God through Ellen White. If an arm is tied up for only a few weeks, it will, it will subsequently be weaker than the arm that has been allowed to perform its usual work during the same period. And physical activity has a similar effect on the entire muscular system. Even the nature is in motion. The sea is in constant motion. Also the grass and the leaves move uh, without anyone having touching it. And by the grace of God, the sun, the moon and the stars perform their, their use, useful and beautiful mission by being in motion and radiating the glory of God. And through nature, through God's design, his laws of love, we can see that activity cultivates power. Therefore, we as humans who are created in spirit and body and the image of God must be active as he and his creation is. And as we understand God's creation and our bodies better, we will seek to add it under the noble powers of our minds. And we will also look at the body as a wonderful, wonderful construct uh, the eternal architect has designed and left to us to take care of it as we take care of the plants, creatures, and other things. And for our Christian lives to go well, it is of the utmost importance that we develop a healthy soul and a healthy body. And that power, which activity cultivates, can be transferred to our personal life. But in what way? As I said, uh, I mentioned it earlier, that physical exercise cultivates discipline. And I, I have experienced it myself. When I make time to do some type of physical exercise every day and stick to the plan, even if I don't feel like it, 
and I end up exercising anyway, it makes it easier for me to do it next time, also when I don't feel like it. And because, you know, we should exercise not because of the motivation that we may have in the moment, because motivation is a feeling and feelings come and go and can be <laughs> not stable uh, at times. And we should exercise because we know and understand that it is good for us. And it's something that our whole being needs. And I have also experienced it that the discipline from exercising transfer, it can be transferred into other uh, areas of my daily life. Uh, when I got disciplined enough to exercise despite the unmotivating feelings, I've learned that even if I don't feel like doing homework or cleaning the house or anything like that, I end up doing it anyway. And it's amazing because when you learn to um, daily base your actions, not on your feelings, but on principle, and that is a powerful habit that can change our lives by uh, giving uh, us the willpower to overcome discouraging and un unmotivated thoughts, bad habits, and also bad excuses. And remember, uh, discipline is not a personality trait, but a habit. So every one of us can get disciplined to exercise. And as Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Do you think that we are globally a sed sedentary society? Christian says yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I agree. A review of the world literature over the last 50 years concludes that inactivity alone results in a constellation of problems and conditions, eventually leading to premature death. Here are some um, key facts from World Health Organization. Up to 5 million deaths uh, this a year could be averted if the global population was more active. And globally, one in four adults do not meet the global recommended levels of physical activity. And people who are insufficiently active have a 20% to 30% increased risk of death compared to people who are sufficiently active. And more than 80%, 80, 80% of the world's adolescent population is insufficiently physically active. And this is shocking. Yes. Mm -hmm. And why has God not told us about this before? Well, he has. God told us not, not 50 years ago by the world's literature and scientific findings, but over 100 years ago through his prophet. And she says, continued inactivity is one of the greatest causes of debility of body and feebleness of mind. Many are sick who ought to be in very good health and thus in possession of one of the richest blessings they could enjoy. And she also said, says in Ministry of Healing, I think, inactivity is a fruitful cause of disease. Exercise quickens and equalizes the circulation of the blood. But in idealness, the blood does not circulate freely and the changes in it so necessary to life and health do not take place. 
the skin too becomes inactive. Impurities are not expelled as they would be if the circulation had been quickened by vigorous exercise. The skin kept in a healthy condition and the lungs fed with plenty of pure, fresh air. This state of the system throws a double burden on the excre excretory organs and disease is the result. So many things to take in. And now I I want to write uh, I want you to write down these two titles of the two TED Talks uh, TED Talk videos I have here. Due to the time constraint, we will not have the opportunity to watch these videos and talk about them. But I highly highly recommend you to watch these after this workshop. And it's <clears throat> the one TED Talk is by Roger Frampton. And the title is Why Sitting Destroys You. And it really uh, got me think and it blew my mind. <laughs> and the other one is by Lauren Parsons and the title is Snack on Exercise. And these videos uh, will shift your paradigm about exercise as they did for me to see it as a fundamental, integral and uplifting part of our day. So write them down. Okay. But what type of physical exercise has health benefits? Well, in the book Health Psychology, it says that at one time, uh, scientists believe that only aerobic exercise has health benefits. But now evidence suggests that any kind of exercise has benefits, especially for middle-aged and older adults. So um, don't worry if you really don't like to run or to do intensive strength training, it's okay. You don't have to do it to get the health benefits. But we can do a lot of different physical activities uh, where we can use our whole, uh, whole body in different ways as bicycling, carry groceries, shoveling, gardening, walking, play sports, play with your dog or with your children, do some stretching or clean the house. And those activities can be done at any level of skill and for enjoyment by everyone. But it is also very important to mention that it's so important to find a physical exercise or activity that you actually like, because it's more important uh, than just doing what others do. Because when we do physical exercise that we really don't enjoy doing, the body starts to produce stress hormones like cortisol. So really find something that you really like or, yeah, partly like, but yeah, it's really, it's really important. And how much physical activity and exercise, exercise should we do? Uh, World Health Organization says that adults aged 18 to 64 years should do at least, um, around five hours of moderate intensity aerobic physical activity or at least around two and a half hours of vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity or an equivalent combination of moderate and vigorous intensity activity throughout the week. And we also should um, do muscle strengthening activities at uh, moderate or greater intensity that involve all major muscle groups on two or more days a week as these provide additional health benefits. And lastly, we 
we should also uh, limit the amount of time spent being sedentary. Replacing sedentary time with physical activity of any intensity, including light intensity, provides health benefits. But is it important where I exercise? Physical activity is, in most cases, positive, no matter where it takes place. But is there a difference between exercising indoors or outdoors? Uh, in the last decade, researchers have tried to find answers to this. In a study published in the research journal Environmental Science and Technology, the results were very interesting. And by conducting a systematic review of research in the field, the authors behind the analysis conclude that exercising outdoors in a natural environment provides better perceived mental well being compared to exercising indoors. And exercising outdoors was seen in connection with a grading greater feeling of re revitalization, no, re revitalization, increasing energy and positive commitment, but also less tension, anger, depression, and decrease in cortisol levels, a hormone related to stress, yes. And participants also reported greater enjoyment and satisfaction with outdoor activity, and that it was more likely that they would continue with the training. So that, that is very interesting. And uh, I have also many other studies that have come to the same conclusion here, if you are interested. And you may think, why has not God told us about this before? Well, he has. Those who accustom themselves to proper exercise in the open air will generally have a good and vigorous uh, circulation. We are more dependent upon the air we breathe than upon the food we eat. Men and women, young and old, who desire health, do you desire health? And who would enjoy active life should remember that they cannot have this without a good circulation. And whatever their business and inclinations, they should make up their minds to exercise in open air as much as they can. They should feel it a religious, religious duty to overcome the conditions of health which have kept them conf confined indoors, deprived of exercise in the open air. And she also says that by active exercise in the open air every day, the liver, kidneys, kidneys and lungs also be strengthened to perform their work. Bring to your aid the power of the will, which will resist cold and will give energy to the uh, nerv nervous system. In a short time, you will so realize the benefit of exercise and pure air that you would not live without these blessings. Your lungs deprived of air will be like a hungry person deprived of food. Indeed, we can live longer without food than without air, which is the food that God has provided for the lungs. Therefore, do not regard it as an enemy, but as a precious blessing from God. Yeah. 
And here is some practical tips for daily physical activity and exercise. And here we can see a physical activity pyramid that can inspire us to be more active throughout the week. So feel free to just take a picture of it or just write down what it says. And it says that we should reduce, for example, TV viewing. That's why I don't have a TV. <laughs> and internet surfing. Mm -hmm. Excessive reading and computer use. And at least twice a week, we should do uh, leisure lifestyle activities, low aerobic ex exercises like, for example, light gardening or housework. And of course, we should do housework anyway. Yeah. And we also should do flexibility and strength training exercises like easy calisthenics or stretching or light moderate resistant training and it's like yeah just strength training and we should also do at least three times weekly aerobic exercises like walking jogging swimming bicycling and also do recreational exercises for example like sports um, and daily as often as possible we should carry gro groceries as to take stairs and walking to work or bicycling to work uh, if we can yeah and we can do many other things yeah and we may think now, how do I start <laughs> or how should I start? Well, number one, find out what type of physical activity and exercises do you enjoy doing? And when you, um, yeah, and you can, I prefer to make a list with different activities or workouts I really like to do and I make a list of them so you should really try to do it yourself and then after you have done a list with activities and exercises that you really like then number two set reasonable and realistic goals that fits well with your weekly plan and write down in your calendar when you have time every week or every day to exercise and then put each activity or workout in the same time period that you set aside for exercising. I really like to do it this way, but yeah, everyone do it by... Um, yeah, but the third... Uh, thing we should do is of course pray about it that god can lead us and help us to do make those changes in our week and of course stick with it <laughs> maybe the most hard part of this process and it's important to mention that the start is not always as pleasurable pleasurable and enjoyable that we may think and Last uh, tip is to don't think, just do it, like Nike says. Um, and one thing I've started to do is to not think. <laughs> and what I mean by that is when I have scheduled in my weekly plan, when I will have the time to work out. Um, and when the time comes, like maybe now uh, or in an hour or two, um, when the time comes, I try not to think. I just do it. Because when I start to think, then I start to come up, up with reasonable reasonable excuses like, oh, well, I, I think I'm too tired now for exercise, to do exercising. Or maybe I'm too sore to do some workout today. And often it doesn't end up well. So I really uh, recommend you to just don't think, 
just close the computer and just go and change and just do it, okay? <laughs> and yeah, that really helped me a lot. Okay. And last practical tip that inspired me, not only from my personal journey with uh, exercising, but also from Ellen White. And she says that each faculty of the mind and each muscle has its distinctive office and all required to be exercised in order to become properly developed and retain healthful vigor. Each faculty has a bearing upon the others. Uh, each faculty has a bearing upon the others and all need to be exercised in order to be properly developed. If one muscle of the body is exercised more than other than other, the one used with the one used will become much larger and will destroy the harmony and beauty of the development of the system. A variety of exercise it will call and to use all the muscles of the body. So we should not only do one type of physical activity or only one type of exercise during our workout, but do different variations of um, exercise, for example, by training a muscle from different angles or by training your running skills by doing different kinds of running exercises. And however, it is also important to remember that every factor of a physical exercise prescription, either its length, volume, intensity, or environment, should be individually adapted and controlled. Okay. And to sum up, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit with, who is in you, who you have from God and you are not your own? And we are not our own. Our bodies is for God, from God, because we didn't create it ourselves. So we have a responsibility. The more we come into harmony with God's original design, with God's laws of love, which the reality is built upon, the easier it will be to maintain optimal physical and mental and spiritual health. And as Ellen White also says, and like we learned today, it is true that proper exercise is a precious blessing. And last but not least, one important thing is also to mention that, like Paul says, for bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So while we do physical exercise and take care of the temple of God that is our body, we should at the same time use our time, energy, and attention to the work for God in our lives for others and for him. So maybe we can just uh, have a little bit, a little, just pray a bit before we just take some questions and talk together. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to give you uh, thanks for everything that you have shared with us today, that you have given us like insights that is really important for our health. But God, you know that we are weak and we are just humans and um, we may not have the habits that helped us to do uh, right decisions in our uh, personal lives. But God, we want to um, give all this wisdom that you have given us 
from science, from the Bible and from Ellen White to help us incorporate everything in your in our thoughts and also also in our actions. Lord, may um, physical activity and exercise be to your your glory and uh, that we may glorify you in our bodies and to help others also uh, became more uh, have a better health. And we'll leave everything in your hands and we thank you for your revelation. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Okay. And here is my references. If you are interested. And yeah. Do you have any questions or any topic you want to discuss or do you want to share some of your practical tips or your journey with physical exercise? So yeah, feel free to share it. You also Christian. <laughs> wanted to say for the people that is watching us from online if they want to uh, they can access uh, the um, like the you know in the top i think top uh, right there's a button to access with audio and video so they, if they want to access through that and uh, unmute themselves and ask the question or if not they can use the chat that it's uh, on the also yeah. in the right yeah. side <laughs> Any questions? If not, <laughs> Christian, what was uh, the most thought-provoking pro uh, thing you heard today? <laughs> I, I must admit, I was shocked uh, with this study you showed that uh, if you exercise more than uh, three hours per day, uh, it's like even worse for your mental health. That was yeah. really interesting. <laughs> But I think it's like hard ex physical exercise, not only physical activity, you know, so. Yeah. Mm. That was really shocking, but yeah. <laughs> I agree. Okay, so I think there are no more questions and no discussion topics i guess <laughs> so yeah. i just want to thank you natalia very much and uh wish everyone a blessed day and uh a blessed um uh, last meeting last uh, the commitment service that's going to take place i think in a few minutes so thank you very much for uh being here and yeah see you all <laughs>